Right, welcome back. Um, I'm just going to go through my manual controls, my manual engine controls. Um, now, I must stress, I don't know everything about it. Um, I'm just going to show you what I do, and uh, you can take it or leave it. So, uh, let's go to the controls panel first. Right, so what I've got is engine controls mode. Uh, you need a button to turn it on and off for manual and auto. You need the button. Um, and when you press that, some planes, like most of the German ones, will still have an auto prop pitch. Um, and if, if that's the case, if a plane has an auto prop pitch, I never adjust it. I just leave it in auto. Um, I will show you the mechanics later. Um, but if you want to adjust it manually, you press another button, which is this one. Toggle auto prop pitch, which I'll show you later. Um, I've got a slider. See, I've got a, th a throttle quadrant with three throttles on it. And I've got it on propeller, radiator, and oil radiator. So they're on an axis. So if I do this... Where is it? There it is. It's there, look. So I've got, the, I've got those three on a slider. Toggle auto, auto radiator. Um, as with the toggle auto prop pitch, some planes have an auto radiator. So if you want to adjust them in manual controls, you've got to press that as well. So I've got a button for that. Um, turbocharger, uh, I never adjust because every time I try and fiddle with the, with the turbocharger, the, I blow the engine up. So I don't know how well it's implemented. The P47, as soon as I try and adjust it, it just blows up. So <laughs> I've got buttons set for it, but um, I leave that in auto. So if a plane has uh, auto prop pitch, an auto radiator, an auto turbocharger, as soon as you press manual engine controls, these will still be in auto, and you've got to disable them to adjust them. So anyway, turbocharger I never mess with, because I've, <laughs> I've always blown it up. Uh, toggle supercharger, um, you can adjust that. Well, you need to adjust it if you get to altitude. Um, it's either... It's just a toggle. It'll go between one, two, and three. Or if a plane has three supercharged gears, it'll go one, two, three, one, two, three, or one, two. Um, next, magneto, the magnetos. I, I've got them assigned, but you never need to adjust them. Um, and that's just a button. And toggle prop feathering is a button as well, which you need. Um, if, the, if the plane has it and you need to turn an engine off to glide home, toggle prop feathering. Um, and then you can do that. If it doesn't have pro uh, toggle prop feathering, you can turn your propeller pitch to zero, and it's very similar to the uh, prop feathering. Um, and then I've got these all listed, but um, what this does is you've got a, a key for each engine. So when you're in manual controls, you've got two engines. You want to you want to um, adjust engines on number one, yeah, it's quite difficult to explain. You have to disable controls for number two, which I'll show you. But yeah, I've got a, a key, a number for each engine. Um, and then control all engines, you can turn them all on and off. Um, so yeah, I've got buttons for everything. So uh, let's close that. Um, laser, yeah, I don't know, I don't know what that. So, let's start. Um, what I'll do, I'll go... Because this, this, uh, this plane does not have um, auto-radiator control, and it doesn't have auto-pritch control. Um, and there's no oil radiator in this, it's just one radiator. So basically, um, that's all it is really, just uh, adjust it, 50% um, radiator, it should be alright. Um, and the propeller pitch, I don't think if you can see it down here, it's underneath the left hand, you can see it there, look. Now, propeller pitch, it's a bit weird in War Thunder because you get RPM control in planes, and you get propeller pitch in planes. Um, so, 
the RPM control, if it had one, it would it would control your propeller pitch to get a specific RPM that you want. And propeller pitch would just a, would just basically adjust the pitch, but uh, in this game it, it seems to have combined them both together, so it's a bit uh, it's a bit tricky. Anyway, 100% for taking off, and then you can adjust it as as you are. Um, some of the German planes, well, no, I should say some of the Japanese planes that use German engines. They don't have the auto prop pitch, as in, as in the 109s and the 190s. So you've got to do it yourself. And if you keep it at 100, it'll blow the engine up, but it'll get a lot of heat. So, in in for example, the Key 61, I like to keep it at 89 propeller pitch. So, yeah. So I've just got these in a slider. Um, I've got the mixture on a button, which goes up and down, which I'll show you here. So, if you don't have sliders if you don't have a slider um, you can just use relative control and a button to increase the value and a button to decrease the value um, if you don't have a slider you can just have two buttons for up and down as long as that's in relative control and then you got increase value decrease value um, continue and then yes yeah, research um, at low level you can go up to 90 or 100 um, now I think it's the percentage of fuel going into the engine so at higher levels there's less oxygen at higher levels so you don't need as much fuel so you, you can turn it down the higher you go but I usually leave it at 60 you don't really need to do it but um, at low levels you can certainly put it up and you might get a bit more power but I don't know how accurately it's you know, modelled in the game but as I said if, you got, if you're at really high altitude and you've got high mixture you can flood the engine so 60% is probably fine um, and then I've got a button for the supercharge oh that's the magnetos um, you don't need the magnetos, just forget about that. Um, so, toggle supercharger 1 and 2. Right, so the uh, the supercharger, um, I'm looking at the boost gauge there. Um, it's just over 8. Um, usually, I usually wait until I'm about 8,000 feet, uh, 9,000 feet, 3,000 meters, something like that. Um, before you really need to change uh, supercharger, but every plane is different and it's trial and error really. Um, I'll climb, I'll climb up a bit and I'll show you what I mean. So I'm at 5,000 feet. If I look at the boost gauge and put it into into mode two, the boost doesn't change, so it's not really helping at all, and the revs have gone down. So I'll put it back, and I'll get a bit higher and I'll uh, try and show you. So yeah, as I said. Um, Every plane has a different altitude at which the uh, supercharger kicks in, and some planes have three superchargers. So you need all you need to do is just learn which which plane does what. Um, now this is a, this this plane is a lower level uh, submarine attacker, so I don't know if the supercharger will work that well at high level. Um, but it's not working right. I'll, I'll get a bit higher. Right, so I'm just over 11,300 feet. Um, if you look at the boost gauge, as when I go into stage 2, you can see the boost gauge goes up a bit. So that's uh, super stats charged, that's uh, stage 1, that's stage 2. So 4,000 meters, 12,000 feet in this particular plane stage 2 is probably needed um, to get more power um, so if you are in manual controls and you're at high altitude the supercharger is pretty vital really if you're doing high altitude stuff um, because in, in, in stage 1 you can see I'm, the higher I go I'm just losing power um, 
and your plane will be no good without any power. So stage two, the boost goes up and I'm back in power. So I said every plane is different but um, if you are going to mess with manual controls you, you do need to think about the supercharger. Um, everything else is surplus to requirements. Um, I mean I could drop the propeller pitch down. Um, the propeller pitch as well you've got to mess around with each plane will be different. As I said some of the, the Japanese planes with the German engines I try and keep at 89 or it just overheats otherwise. Um, and then the radiator you can adjust as you will. If, it, uh, if you start getting warm you can open it up and if you start getting cold you can close it. Um, the thing about manual controls is when in auto and you press the wet button I've got a, a button to go into wet the auto controls will close the radiator so you'll just overheat straight away um, but with manuals you can keep them as they are and then press boost so that is the supercharger um, alright let's get on to these uh, swapping engines across I'll put everything back to a hundred. Right, so let's level. Let's turn around before the game kicks me out. Right, so we're flying level. So if I, if my engine, if my no, for example, if my number one engine. Uh, number one is always on the far left hand side and then it goes down across the plane so engine one is always on the far left think about it that way so that is engine one if I wanted to turn that off I would have to disable controls to engine two you see what I mean so in order to fiddle with just engine one I've got to turn controls off for engine two and to do that I would press two which is my which is uh, which is my second engine control number two button. Continue. Uh, so I would have to turn engine two off, and it says, "Where does it? Where does it say?" All right, second engine controls are off, so that will stay as it is, and now I can adjust this one. And you can see the top left-hand corner of the screen. You can see the throttle is only controlling engine one and then the radiator and the prop pitch is controlling purely on engine one. So if I turn engine one off by pressing the engine toggle button, the, the button you use to start your engine, it's turned engine one off but it's left engine two because I've turned controls off to engine two. It is very counterintuitive, but uh, yeah, there we go. Um, so the first thing I would do is close the radiator to engine one to stop the drag. Um, there's no oil radiator, so I don't need to adjust that. Um, but I can prop uh, toggle the uh, prop feather in. So now the prop is feathered. Basically, the if you think about the the, the blades. Um, they're facing forward. I don't know how to how to uh, how to explain it, but yeah, the 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 face the facing forward to to create the least drag. Um, you can adjust the propeller pitch, but if you've got prop feathering, it doesn't need it. So now you've got. I can turn the throttle down as well. So now I've got uh, prop feathered. I've got the radiator zero, so it's producing well it's it's producing the least amount of drag that it possibly can. I've got to turn around again, haven't I? So now I can turn I can press the number one button to turn the controls off to this engine, so then I don't affect it anymore. And now I can put everything back and press engine two to turn engine 2 back on. So now I'm just controlling engine 2. So engine 1 doesn't have the radiator, it's got prop feathering and uh, 
I'm just flying on one engine with, with the least amount of drag possible. Um, eventually that propeller will stop, I think. But yeah, there you go. I'm flying with one engine. Barry's not too impressed with me. So there you go. Um, and then... And then that's it, really. Uh, right, let's go to the German planes. I hope I explained that right, because it's... It is, it is very counterintuitive. Let's go to the German planes. Alright, I'm just in the in the Japanese uh, plane. So, um, the Axis planes that use the Daimler six o five or whatever it is that use the German engines, um, I will always try and get the prop pitch to about eighty nine. Or else it'll overheat, but it doesn't have the the German prop pitch um, indicator. So I mean, it's got the German engine, but it doesn't have the German engine prop pitch auto control. So if you're overheating in your key sixty one, it's because you've probably got a hundred percent. So I try and keep it at eighty nine, um, and the radiators um, you open them up as as you need to. Um, you do get uh, an indicator there, look, when you adjust it. Um, and I'm guessing the bottom one is flaps. Yeah, it is. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Right, so yeah, the the planes that use German engines, I usually try and keep it at 89 or we'll overheat. So let's just go to the, the German one straight away. Right, so now I'm in the... I'm in the K4 now. Um, now, with with a lot of German planes, everything is in auto, even when you go into manual. Um, so, if you see, I'm not, I, I can't even pronounce that. Um, so, I'm going to press manual engine controls, and you'll see that manual propeller pitch control is in auto. Now, if that is the case on any plane, I leave it in auto. Um, but if you press the the auto prop pitch button that we said that we what we had here uh, there is toggle auto prop pitch I have a button for it um, now I only press it if I need to in you know if my engine's dead or something um, so if you press that you can adjust you can see it moving there you can adjust the prop pitch manually but if you do that in a German plane you generally just blow the engine up straight away um, so I leave that in auto, um, and you'll see when you're taking off, you'll see that fluctuating all the time because it's trying to keep the, it's trying to keep a positive, it's trying to keep the same revs regardless of how fast you're going. Um, so I leave that in auto if the plane has it, and then some of the American planes have it as well, and some of the British have it as well. Um, and as you can see, the radiator is in auto. Uh, as well as the oil and the water is an auto as well so you can press the oil radiator which is this button uh well the radiator button does both where are we toggle auto radiator so that will when you press that it'll turn the controls to manual for you um the both the oil and the water so now I can adjust the oil and water. Um, it's in it's in auto. I press the button, and now it's in manual. Um, I always adjust that, um, and you know you just uh, you just adjust it as you need it. Um, a lot of the, a lot of these German planes will have mixture control because that's automatic. It's fuel injection and all that sort of stuff. Um, there'll be no turbocharger, obviously. Um, so yeah, that is that. Um, and the supercharger, the supercharger is integrated into the engine of a, in a, a 605. Um, and that's all manual. I mean, that's all automatic. Um, so a lot of the German planes are very advanced. Um, the only thing I change on the, on the, on the German planes are the radiators. If it, as I said before, if it's got auto propeller pitch, I'll leave it because you'll just blow it up. It'll just blow up straight away. Um, 
And I don't think there's anything much else to do. Right, so as I was saying about the 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 the, the, the Italian and the Japanese planes. I mean it says it says Kawasaki H A forty or H forty. But it's um it's not a six oh five, it's a six oh one. It's a license built six oh one, so um although it says Kawasaki it is based on the German engine, so the uh the prop pitch um obviously is very similar. But uh, they don't have the they don't have the, uh, the the auto prop pitch on it, so it's a similar it's a very similar engine. But uh, as I said, I've, with the key sixty ones and the the two or twos and the things like that, eighty nine percent prop pitch is probably best for cruising because you'll overheat otherwise. Um, and I think that's probably about it, really. Um, and I say I don't know everything, but um, that's just what I do. Um, let's go back to controls, manual engine controls. So yeah, for propeller pitch, I've, as I said, I've, I've got it on a slider, but if I wanted to use keys to go up and down, you need to click relative control and assign a button for up and down, which I have done for mixed, where's mixture, for mixture, relative control, yes. And a button for up and down. And then it goes up and down. And that's probably it, really. But yeah, as I said, prop pitch, it is a bit weird in this game because they've combined RPM control and prop pitch into a, into one control. So it, it, it it's difficult to work out how it works properly. But uh, yeah, that's what I do. Um... That's what I do. I don't know if it's the best thing to do, but that's what I do. And don't forget, supercharger control is a must if you're flying at altitude, because you'll lose power otherwise. I don't think many planes have auto... I don't think there's an auto supercharger control. Well, there's, there's auto turbo control, which are leaving auto, but I don't think there's an auto um, compressor. Um, if I just go to J2M2, I got a test flight. I know the some of the Corsairs might have three gears, um, but I th I think the J2M2 has three supercharger gears. So if I go to manual um, and click gear supercharger gear two, it's only got two. Now which one is it then? Uh, so the J2M5, um, the J2M5 has got three supercharger gears. Um, so obviously there's low, mid, and high. Um, and all I would all I would do is look at that uh, black and red gauge. And uh, I said you've just got to, it's just trial and error. You just got to fly to a height, and if you go into into gear supercharger gear two and it increases. That just that just means that you need to uh, leave it in two or three. Um, uh, return to hangar. I don't think there's much else. I mean that that was the boost gauge um, on American planes. Uh, let's just go in the Corsair. You would look at a different gauge, which is the manifold pressure. Um, which is that one there in the middle of the screen, manifold pressure. Um, and if that increases, it means that you're in the right gear. If it decreases, you're in the wrong gear. Um, and does this have three? I'm not sure. Yeah, it's got three gears as well. But as I said, if you're doing manual controls, supercharger, it's, it's the only thing you really need to worry about. Um, so, yeah. As I said, get, you get to a certain altitude. If you press it into gear two, and that and that gauge doesn't move, it means that you're not high enough to go into tier two. And then there's there's gear three as well, even higher. Um, so that's a manual pressure. I don't know what other planes. Other planes, I'm not sure about what gauge to look at. Uh, Germany, I don't bother because they're automatic. Soviets, 
Uh, let's have a look. All right, I'm in the LA-5. I'll just uh, get to altitude. I'm not sure which gauge to look at. I think it's... I think it's that one in the middle of the screen. That the one that's just pointing just below 60. So I'll try... I'll, I'll look at that. I think it's that one. But as I said, after trial and error, you'll get to learn each plane and what altitude it requires um, changing. Because I think this is only has it only has two gears. Yeah, so it is that button there. Look, um, it is that dial there. So I'm pressing two, and the power's going down. Press it one, it goes back up. So let's go. Uh, let's go up. Yeah, so you've got to work out which dial you're looking at. So it's that one that's, that's at 100, well, 100 something. If I press into gear 2, it goes down a bit, which means I'm too too low for it. So, yeah, that's... Ooh. Jeez Louise. So, yeah, you've just got to learn each plane. Um, I've just ripped my undercarriage, haven't I? Yeah, never mind. So, yeah, it's that gauge in the middle of the screen. If it goes up, you're in the right gear. If it goes down, uh, you're in the wrong gear. <laughs> um, but that's pretty much it, really. Now, that's what I do. Um, and I'll leave it there. Um, but, yeah, manual controls are useful if your engine's dead. Um, and even if, your engine, even if you've just got one engine, um, if you can just close the radiators... Um, and if you've got, if you haven't got uh, feathering props, you can just put your prop pitch to zero, and that's as close as you can get to feathering. Um, and then you you can glide better. And obviously, if you close the radiators in a dive, you'll you'll speed up quicker. But you love your engine. Ah, anyway, that's enough for me. That's what I do. I don't know if it's the best thing to do, but that's what I do. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you later. Bye bye.